This is Paul McCartney, Music is Ideas, The Stories Behind the Songs, Volume 1, 1970 to 1989, by Luca Parisi. This is a new book. I say new, it's been out several months now, but new in 2023. I finally got round to reading this, uh, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about it. I'm going to show you some examples of what's in here. I'm going to show you how it sits on your shelves alongside other books. And I'm going to tell you how this might differ from other books that you have on Paul McCartney. A little bit of information about the author, Luca, if you're not familiar with him. So Luca wrote the Paul McCartney Recording Sessions 1969 to 2013 book, which was quoted in the Paul McCartney Archive Collection for Wildlife in the deluxe book. Luca's also worked directly for MPL in the last couple of years on a couple of projects. He did the Italian translation for the Paul McCartney Lyrics book. And also, Luca helped directly with MPL with additional research for the Paul McCartney 7-inch singles box last year. So he's got a great pedigree of working, actually officially, with Paul McCartney's team. So what does this book cover? And, and just as importantly, what doesn't it cover? Uh, just so that you know exactly what you would be getting with this. So this is a reference book, and it quite clearly advertises itself as a reference book here. Um, rather than a, a biography type book, I think it's important to compare this to the McCartney Legacy book that also came out around the, the, the beginning of 2023, because they each do serve a, diff a, a different purpose. Whereas this book is very much a biography of Paul McCartney and his life and, and sort of everything that was going on at the time. This book focuses on the recording sessions mainly. There's a bit of background about what's going on to um, to lead up to the album, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about. But essentially, this focuses on what's happening in, this, in the studio. So I, I think a good comparison, if you're wondering what the difference between the two might be, uh, if you were to compare to Mark Lewison, McCartney Legacy is sort of the the version of the Beatles tune in uh, but McCartney related and this new book by Luca is probably more closely aligned to Mark Lewison's complete recording sessions and 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 chronicles certainly the studio side of the chronicles books uh, that, that's just to give you an idea of, sort of where each one is is coming at so this book uh, like I say, it covers 1970, so it covers the, the sessions for the McCartney album right through to the end of 1989. There's an extended intro in this book. Uh, before I get to that, actually, I'll just show you this. My copy is signed by Luca. I would like to thank Luca who sent me this book. I very much appreciate it. Uh, there is an extended introduction uh, in this book, uh, which gives uh, sort of background to the back end of the Beatles' career and the sort of circumstances that led Paul McCartney to suddenly starting recording sessions at the end of 1969 that would become the McCartney album. So you get a sort of a potted history of what's led him to that point. And then from that point onwards, each album, uh, and, and standalone singles as well, if they were separate to an album, has its own section in this book. I'm going to show you a section here relating to McCartney 2 which starts on page 330. So the, the book has a sort of a fairly standard layout that it does consistently through each album. So here's McCartney 2. It starts off with uh, a kind of overview of the situation that led Paul to record this album, where, where he was at in his life and what, what musicians was he looking to bring in and, and what was the sort of story behind the start of the album. So you have that as an overview for everything. And then... Over the next however many pages, different for each album, it then has sections for each song. So there's coming up, for example, and it's talking about the recording of the songs. Uh, so like like Lewison would do in the recording studio recording sessions book, he's talking about what musicians are on the songs, how the songs were formed, uh, quotes from the musicians involved. You've got this for every song on the album, and then. Like I say, each album is covered consistently. Once you get to the songs, uh, once you've covered the main album itself, there is then a section about other songs that were recorded during these sessions. So, for example, for Mark McCartney 2, uh, the fantastic Check My Machine and Secret Friend has its own section here. 
uh, and it's got the the songs that we know from the um, McCartney to archive edition like Bogey Wobble, Mr H Atom, uh, You Know I'll Get You Baby, All You Horse Riders, Blue Sway and then if there was any unreleased songs, songs that are still unreleased to this day, it would cover all of those here as well. And then it gives a, a section where it will talk about the reaction to the album. How did it fare in the charts? Uh, what was the critical reception to it? How did Paul review the album afterwards? That kind of thing. So you've got another, another full page on that there. Before it then goes on to start talking about, in this case, Tug of War. So it's very comprehensive on each album. So because this covers unreleased songs as well, you will also find in here details of, for example, the Rupert album that Paul recorded in the 1970s. There's even sections for things like the, the MPL juggler theme that you see on Paul McCartney DVDs and, and videos. It's all covered in this book. What's not covered here, um, which I was surprised about, so I did ask Luke a question, I was expecting to see, uh, for example, a section on the McGear album uh, recorded in the early 1970s by, by Paul's brother, which is pretty much a, a kind of lost Wings album, features all the lineup of Wings. So I asked Luca if the scope of this book was specifically songs released in Paul McCartney's name. And he said, yes, exactly. I've got a message from him here. Uh, the book is on the McCartney discography, basically mirroring the records that appear on his official website. But... What Lucas said here is that volume three of this book, because like I say, this is volume one, volume three is going to cover all, all collaborations, and he's put that in uppercase, all collaborations that Paul has done throughout his, uh, his career since he left the Beatles. So uh, we've got a roadmap here that he's mentioned to me of, obviously volume one is out now, Volume 2, which is going to cover 1990 up to now, is planned for 2024. And 2025, Volume 3, which will cover all collaborations and appearances on other people's albums. So this is going to be a really comprehensive set over the next couple of years by the time it's finished. This book covers up to the end of 1989. So you can see, for example, towards the back end here, we're in the flowers in the dirt section. We've got, put it there, and we've got Figure of Eight fully covered. And that's where I expected it to end, but it doesn't. There is a section after that. This is something I knew nothing about. For a project that Paul did just, just because he wanted to, at the very end of 1989, a project called uh, Daumier's Law, Daumier, I've probably mangled the pronunciation of that. I knew nothing about this. This was recorded just before Christmas of 1989, and it's a, it's a six act suite which was then turned into a, a short animated film in the early 1990s. Um, I, I was particularly interested in this because he recorded this just a couple of weeks before I first saw him in concert in Birmingham in January 1990. Uh, so I, I looked it up and Daumier's Law, it's a six track instrumental piece, like I say, for a short animated film, uh, which was nominated for a Palme d'Or Award, nominated for the Chicago International Film Festival, uh, and it won a BAFTA in 1993 for Best Short Animated Film. Somehow it had completely passed me by, but the level of detail in this book means it's going into that as well. So I found that really interesting. In terms of my enjoyment of this book, I certainly really enjoyed reading it. I often find it difficult to spend a long time sat reading what is, by its own admission, a reference book. Uh, whereas a biography, I could maybe sit there for two or three hours and, and just go through it. I, personally, you may well be different. I find it difficult to do that with a reference book. So I tend to come at this in sort of short bursts. Uh, and certainly if I was going to be playing an album that's covered in here, I would love to sit and read this while listening to the album. So I'm going to put on wings at the speed of sound. I'm going to go to the section here and read about the songs while I'm listening to it. That's just personally how I tend to prefer reference books. So I think this is a book that I will keep going back to and I'll keep dipping into rather than sitting for hours on end and reading it. But yeah, that's just my personal preference. Here's an idea of how it sits on your shelves, just if you're wondering if you've got shelf space. So you can see it's a little bit taller than, for example, the McCartney Lyrics book, quite a bit taller than the Mark Lewis and Tune In and McCartney Legacy books. Probably around the same thickness as a John Lennon Ultimate Collection box set. So of course, when we talk about Paul McCartney, 
he is the most successful writer of popular music in history. So a book that goes into that level of detail about his recording sessions and the making of those songs that have made him that, I think is a very important thing. And this volume of books is going to be uh, certainly one of the absolute best and most well-researched on the subject. Uh, and uh, yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend this book. I think with this book and McCartney Legacy, that have both come out this year, we are much better served now in terms of the history of Paul McCartney than we were a year ago. Uh, and these are two both absolutely vital books. So yeah, I would absolutely recommend this book. Have you got it? Have you read it already? Because like I say, it's been out several months. Let me know what you think of this. Uh, but I'm just going to keep going back to this book when I'm listening to those Paul McCartney albums and uh, just, just taking the, the sessions as I'm reading it. So thank you very much. And uh, it's now time for me to go and start reading this one, all about Mal Evans. I'll be back with a review on that at some point fairly soon. Cheers. I'll see you later. Bye.